A man vanishes from his hospital room, but it's where he is found which makes this case so mysterious. Hello, true crimers. This is the story of the South African hospital disappearances. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, I know this week I've been doing spooky stories, and I don't really know where on the spooky spectrum this particular story falls in. All I know is that, to me personally, it's creepy. It's disturbing. It's mysterious. It's strange. It's October 5th, 2017, and we are in South Africa. On that day, a 61-year-old father to five children was admitted into the Stellenbosch Hospital. This was because he was undergoing some abdominal surgery, and he was not mobile. He could not physically walk on his own. At roughly 5.15 a.m. on that October 5th, 2017 day, the nurse enters his room. And by the way, his I'm not, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, um, so I'm, I'm just not going to say it because I don't want to butcher it. I've been trying to look up how to say it, but I'm having a hard time finding it. So after the nurse goes to check on him, she literally steps out of his room for maybe a minute or two to get some fresh linens for his room. When she gets back in his room, and by the way, there's no one else in the room with him. It's just he's in there by himself. He's gone. He's just completely vanished from the room. Now again, due to the surgery he had undergone, he could not move on his own. And also the nurse was only out of the room for a minute, possibly two. They were completely baffled by what on earth happened. They immediately began to search the hospital from end to end, top to bottom. They don't find him. His family wasn't notified until about two days later. The way his family found out was the hospital called them two days later to see, hey, is he home with you? because he ain't here. You would think they would have called the family immediately with this missing patient, but no. The family is like, how did you lose him? Like, how did that even occur? And the hospital staff really had no answers for him. So the family arrives at the hospital pretty much that day and they themselves begin to search. And then over the next week or two, they search and search, they come back, they search, they come back, they search. It's just this endless cycle of looking around the hospital and around the entire hospital outside to see where the hell he went. Well, on October 20th, 2017, they got their answer. There were some construction crews doing some reconstruction or remodeling of the hospital. And in this portion of the hospital that was being redone, it was completely isolated. There was nobody in it, like no patients, and the staff didn't go back there. So as they're renovating, they tear out a part of the ceiling. When they look inside, when they climb inside, they smell something horrible, like decay, and then they find a man. He is in the fetal position, lying on the ceiling, the floor of the ceiling, and he is dead. That man would later be identified as the missing 61-year-old patient. The hospital allegedly did an autopsy on the man, and they determined that he did not die from any complications with his abdominal surgery. They also told the family that he did not die of any natural causes. All they really said was he died of unknown reasons. They could not figure out how he died and what caused his death. They also could not figure out how a man who could not walk due to a surgery managed to not only get up out of his bed and walk somewhere, but climb into a ceiling, and then what? Who I don't even, like, don't even know what happened to him at that point. Not to mention the nurse was only out of his room for like a two minutes tops. Like, how, he, just, he couldn't have moved that fast. There has never been a single explanation as to how that man got up in that ceiling. If this was a scenario in which the nurse left and came back like an hour or two later, I could understand, okay, maybe someone killed him, put him in the ceiling. But that's not what happened. She was right outside the door. No one entered the room. I don't know about windows and all that. I'm not sure if they determined if any windows were opened or not. But again, it was such a quick amount of time. How did he get up there? The story quickly became, well, paranormal uh, because there was no explanation for how he died or how he left his hospital room or how he got into that ceiling. It, they just, people were just like, this is some kind of paranormal event. Did it, was he killed by a ghost, a spirit? Was he killed by 
something else that we're not even aware of, you know? It's kind of that where people go when they don't know what happens, they kind of think, well, maybe it's something unnatural. This was not an isolated incident because in 2019, it happened again. This time in a different part of South Africa at the Mahatma Gandhi Memorial Hospital, a man was admitted into the hospital because he had recently got into a construction accident and he broke his leg. He also couldn't walk. So his leg injury was so bad that he was going to require surgery, but it was not a surgery that this hospital could do. And so the plan was that he was going to be admitted into this hospital until they can get him transferred to the next one for his surgery. And again, they reiterated he, well, he was not mobile. He could not walk on his own. As he is there in that hospital, basically waiting for his transfer, his family comes to visit him. He's in great spirits. Everything is fine. There, you know, the surgery is, is likely going to go very well, and there's nothing to worry about. His family leaves, then they never see him again. Now, I don't know if there's any stories in which, like, someone entered the room and left, and then came back within a few minutes and he was gone. I'm not sure. That doesn't really seem to apply here. However, one day, a nurse goes to check on him in his room, a room he had by himself. This patient was gone, missing. He vanished. So, like with the other hospital, they began to search the hospital top to bottom, end to end. Where is this guy? Where did he go? How did he get out of here? He doesn't, he didn't have crutches. He just, he couldn't walk on his own. Two weeks later, a discovery is made in that hospital. There was some hospital staff who were, I guess, in this storage room closet type thing. And they noticed some kind of like liquid building up in a corner in one of the ceiling tiles and it was beginning to drip like a liquid was dripping and they were smelling this really strong odor coming from that area so the staff will climb up they'll prop open the ceiling and what do they find they find a man in a fetal position lying on the ground of the ceiling dead once again an autopsy was performed once again they determined that his death was not related to his leg injury, was not natural. He didn't die of a heart attack or anything like that. Once again, they ruled that he died of unknown reasons. This was an unexplained death, just like with the first patient at a different hospital. Two different men, two different hospitals, two years apart, are both immobile. They cannot move on their own. Both of them vanish without a trace from their hospital rooms where they are bedridden. And then several weeks later, each of them is found inside the ceiling in a fetal position, both having died of unnatural reasons. And this may not have been the only two occurrences. So there is a, uh, a book, I guess, called Autopsy, written by uh, Professor Blumenthal, was the guy's name. And on, in, in this book, he tells of another story from the same area in South Africa. I don't know. I think it was at a, uh, they said it was at a, um, an academic hospital. So this was not one, you know, the other two that were mentioned already. But a man had been admitted into the hospital with severe chest pains. Well, this man, uh, who was probably more mobile than the other two were, but this man, just like the other two, poofs into thin air, he's gone. He vanishes from his hospital room. Later on, they find the man dead in the rafters of the building. Next to him is a single cigarette butt. He too died of unnatural reasons, unknown reasons, unknown origins. Is he connected to the other two? It's not really known. But there is just something so unnerving about it because there is no explanation as to how these men left their hospital bed and got into the ceiling without being heard or seen by anyone. And then just managing to climb in it again when they really physically weren't able to. And then just dying of unknown reasons. I mean, that's it's just so bizarre. Is this some weird serial killer who has this very specific thing well they weren't murdered there was no nothing to indicate any kind of homicide took place how did it happen how did those men get in the ceiling it's never been explained no one has ever come up with an answer there's really no theories other than people saying we don't have any logical reasons so it's got to be paranormal it's got to be Ghosts, demons, something from the other side, uh, aliens maybe. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. It's so odd. It's just so, it's, it's flabbergasting.
is what it is. What do you guys think? Do you have any reasons? Do you have any explanations? Do you think you know how this happened? How these two men died? How they got into those ceilings? Any ideas at all? <laughs> Feel free to discuss that in the comments. I, I don't even know where to begin. I, I don't I don't know. If it was an isolated incident, I, mean, I can be like, okay, let's figure out a way this guy managed to get up there. But the fact that it happened twice, it's just so weird. <laughs> But really, that's it for this story. I just, you know, I felt like sharing it with you guys. I thought it was interesting. So again, let me know what you guys think. But hey, if you're new to this channel, uh, hi, my name is Mike. I tell normally tell true crime stories here on YouTube. Uh, this week I've been telling spookier or stranger stories, I guess you could say. So feel free to subscribe, give the video a like so more people can see the videos. And yeah, I also tell short form true crime stories and the occasional spooky story over on TikTok. I have two different pages. The links to those pages are in the link tree in the description of this video below. So it's easy to find. Also in that link tree, you will find my merch store. We saw like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. Um, nothing super duper fancy, but it's there if you want. We do ship all over the entire world. So feel free to check it out. And then lastly, if there is a case you want me to cover or a spooky story, uh, feel free to send me an email. My email is listed below in the description as well. Just the name of the place or the person, where it happened, when it happened, however it works with what you're recommending. Um, and I'll add it to my list. The list has got over 6,300 names on it or cases on it. I can't promise you when I'll cover that one as I typically pick my cases at random. Um, but I will get to it eventually, I promise. So, yeah. That is it for this video, True Crime, Barooney Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. And uh, we shall see you for the next video. Whenever that is, I don't know. Probably 12 years from now. I'll be dead. No, I won't. Maybe. Could be. God could die tomorrow. You don't know. Just confine me in a ceiling, please. I don't... It's not... Bye.